right, so we're going to make a drawing of the spinal cord and label it along with some structures having to do with spinal nerves that go to the spinal cord. So I'm just drawing a midsection through and I'm just going to add my what we'll see is the gray matter. This is a very rudimentary drawing, obviously. You just want to have some areas distinct from other areas. I'm just going to put that center hole, uh, which is really a passageway for some fluid running down through the center of the spinal cord. And so here I've got what we're going to label as the posterior. Or you may know it as the dorsal view of the spine or portion of the spine. And then we'll have an anterior or ventral. You can use either term to describe these structures. All right, so in an easy structure, we can go ahead and just highlight here with a color. I'm going to highlight it yellow. This is the central canal. I'm just going to abbreviate it CC for central canal. Okay, and that just gives us a place to start. I also want to point out that we could divide this cord in half. Of course, I would want to put the central canal right in the middle. Okay, if we divide this cord in half, meaning from uh, dorsal to ventral or posterior to anterior, we could also give it another characteristic, which would be to say that the posterior receives sensory input and the anterior is the motor output. So another way we could say that would be sensory in and motor out. That's very simplified, but that's one way to think about it. We also need to categorize the color, colors of these areas. And so I'm going to pick a color here to sort of give us a little bit of contrast. And I'm going to go ahead and see if I can fill this in a little more quickly here. So let's try that. It's not too dark. Slightly lighter color here, and I'm going to color this in a light gray because this is the portion of the spinal cord, like it is in the brain, that is considered to be gray matter. And gray matter does not have myelinated axons. If you'll recall from lecture, that myelin is the lipid uh, fatty coating on axons. And whether those axons are in the central nervous system or the peripheral nervous system makes no difference regarding what exactly myelin is, but what makes them is different between the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. So we can recall that in the peripheral nervous system, that it was uh, oligodendrocytes that make those myelin sheets around the neurons in the brain and the spinal cord. Just tracing this out again so we can see it a little better. Do you recall 
what structure makes myelin in the peripheral nervous system? If you thought Schwann cell, you would be correct. So here I've got the gray matter, and that's unmyelinated. So let's make a label here. I want to recall that that is unmyelinated. All right, and we've got white matter to the exterior, which is myelinated. And again, since we're in the central nervous system, the myelin is derived oligodendrocytes. That's just a little extra information that might help you out later on. All right, so we've got our gray matter and our white matter here. Let's start labeling some structures. One thing I'd like to do is so we can see what's going to this. So I'm going to go ahead and draw. This looks like a little broom here, if you will. It's going to go to about halfway. Notice too that it's going to have a little sentinel sticking up like that. I'm going to come out here. about right there. I'm going to draw the exact same thing on the other side. Here I'm adding some nuclei to this area. So remember there's more than one in that container. I'm going to draw the exact same thing on this side. So I need something going out of the motor side, right? That was our sensory going in. And we're going to have our motor going out. And I'm also going to have a giant branch coming off the bottom. I'm emphasizing the size of it because there's so many neurons coming through this area. And we think about it a little bit. What's out here? What's going to be out here are things like skin, maybe skin on someone's hand, uh, organs, perhaps the stomach. I'll just choose an organ. So we could think about this part as being somatic, meaning body. And then we've got something like the stomach, where we could think about that being visceral. Meaning organ. And of course, organs are involuntary, and the body itself has the skeletal muscles, so that's the voluntary portion. So out here in the periphery, uh, we're going to have neurons that are in bundles, and those bundles are called nerves. And when we bundle them up together, we can put myelin on them and insulate them so that the signal travels, um, the sensory signal travels up nicely to the spinal cord and to the brain, and then it uh, exits nicely uh, with, a, with a motor command back out to that viscera or that body part. Okay, so I've got a facsimile of a system here, and I can come in and out um, based on whether or not I'm sensation. And of course, sensation would travel in this direction towards the CNS. And then motor commands would travel in the other direction, out towards the effector, or the thing that's going to have the effect that the body wants to achieve or the brain wants to achieve, meaning 
do I want to move my hand uh, or do I want to let my stomach go in through peristalsis to start digestion? And I'll put a little label on here just in case that is so clearly not the stomach. All right. So I'm going to label some parts of the um, of the system. We've got out here this these roots, and then when we get into the gray matter of the cord, I'll label those things. And the first thing we're going to label is this here out at the back part is the set of neurons going out to and coming from the back. So to the midline and back. And you'll notice that it's not as big as this branch that I've drawn in the front because most of you is in the front, meaning that most of your organs and your skin and your muscles and all that are in front of or to the anterior of your spine which is where your spinal cord is. So we would say this would be two organs and body. And that's why this branch is so big. Okay, so we've got that smaller branch going to the midline and then the larger branch going to the organs and the body. Now right in the middle, I'm going to have something that you may have seen coming out of the sides of the holes, which are the uh, inner vertebral foramen on the skeletons in the laboratory that you may have seen, the models. And so what you see coming out of that little exit to the side when you see it poking out of a, a skeletal model, those little yellow things, that is a spinal nerve. And it's considered what we call mixed meaning that it has both sensory and motor components uh, passing through that little tiny area before they split into this um, smaller branch to the back and, and larger branch to the organs in the body in the front. Okay, so I'm also going to label a couple of things back here. And one of the things we need to notice is that sensation is traveling uh, up towards the spinal column and because of that we're also going to decide which way this path will go and I'm going to trace it really quickly and then I'm going to erase it. Okay so if I had sensation coming in from say my hand I would let it come in and go up and then we have to go up this posterior root and then synapse to this core just like that and so the direction would have been towards the body because this would be sensation now if I have a label to put on these we would call this the dorsal or posterior root And we know that there's sensory only. Right? Because we're going to say sensory comes in the back or the posterior, and motor goes out the front or the anterior. Since this is the dorsal root, we're going to call this, this protrusion, where there are a bunch of uh, neuron cell bodies. I'm going to go ahead and draw what one of those would look like coming out like that. And you may remember this from the lecture that that is where the neuron cell bodies are. We're going to call that the dorsal root ganglion. And I'm going to leave it as plural because there's more than one neuron cell body in that swelling, which is why it looks like a swelling. Now on the actual cord, it would only look like a little bump, just like that, with all of those neuron cell bodies in there and their little extensions going off in either direction. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of that right now. So it's raised up here just for emphasis so you can see it. 
That's the dorsal root ganglia. What I call this as the individual neurons begin to separate and it starts to look more like a broom. Let me see if I can make that look a little bit more like the model does. Okay, so now these look a little bit more like I'm going to label them. These are the dorsal rootlets. And if you keep in mind that a tree or a plant has little rootlets that turn into roots and then that turns into a trunk, it's easier to think about that in terms of something that you're familiar with already. So while we've made that one look one way, we need to keep this consistent. So go ahead and make this side. Also, and you can probably guess the name over here, since we've already got dorsal root on the back, we're going to label this one as the ventral root, or you could say anterior root. This is motor only. Okay, and this is traveling away from the spinal cord, so these are going to be the ventral root lets. Okay, we would see a motor command come out on this side, on this area here, and it would exit. So you wanted to get up and go and get that glass of iced tea out of the kitchen. So you would send a motor command out here, maybe to your hand or to your leg, and that would have an effect on the muscles in your hand or wherever you're, whatever muscle you're trying to move. And so that would be the direction of that command. I'm just going to get rid of that. All right, so I've got some things labeled here on the outside of the spinal cord, and now I'm going to label some things on the interior of the spinal cord so we can see those a little better. I'm going to take this away. All right, so inside the spinal cord, where we've got our gray matter, let's start there. The first place that a sensation is going to synapse. Let's say it comes in, it comes up the back, and it lands right here. And it's going to have two choices depending on where it came from. If it came from, say, the body or the hand or the leg, if it came from the soma, then it's going to synapse at this first section of what's called the posterior horn. Let me make a little note here. This is a, whoops. This is the posterior horn. And this would be the lateral horn. And of course, this would be the anterior. And those places are going to do different things depending on where we are. So we're going to make the back of this, or the most, most posterior portion of this horn. Actually, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use a different color. Let's make it purple. So this first part I'm coloring in purple. is where sensation from the body will land on the posterior horn. So sensation from your leg, sensation from your knee, sensation um, from your elbow, any of that uh, is going to land right there at this first bit. And this is going to be what we can think of. get my labeling in order here, where somatic sensation will synapse or will uh, first be acquired by the spinal cord. 
All right, and then below that, there's going to be another area. These are called lamina. There's lots of lamina in the gray matter and in the white matter, um, actually in the gray matter, but we're just going to look at four. So the second area, which I'm going to color, let's color it blue. Okay, so the second area is where the viscera are going to synapse. So if your viscera, if your guts, so this is the visceral sensation. All right, so if you're an organ, you're going to uh, send your sensory data to this area, the second part the second lamina as you move in. Both of these are in the posterior horn. And this is the somatic and visceral sensory portion of the posterior horn. Now, if you are visceral sensation and you need to put out a uh, visceral command, say to tell the stomach that it needs to go ahead and start peristalsis. I'm going to do that over here in this lateral horn. Okay, so this lateral horn, I'm going to go ahead and color it blue as well. So we can just keep our visceral blue theme. So if the central nervous system is contacting an organ, that's the target or the effector, then we'll think about the command leaving this portion and going to whatever organ needs to be affected. So we could call this visceral. Actually, I'm going to put it on the other side to keep in line with the motor area. Okay, so we can call this visceral motor. All right, and of course, we've got to hit up our somatic motor. We're going to put that right here. And I think I colored that purple. And so again, just to keep in line with the colors, this is where motor commands are going to go out to the body. And these are going to be voluntary, where obviously the visceral commands are not. Okay, so here I have the somatic motor area or lamina. And we can look at these as three different groups, this posterior horn, this lateral horn, and this anterior horn. And we want to be thinking about the lateral horn and the anterior horn as motor only. And the posterior horn as sensory only. Okay, and then we want to add our words to that, whether or not it's uh, somatic or visceral in that posterior horn. And then we want to add, in our minds, we want to add visceral to that lateral horn, and we want to add somatic to that anterior horn. Okay, so again, if I'm a sensation coming in, and so we've got a sensation from the hand, and it comes in, and it goes up, and it's going to take that posterior pathway going to go up, come back into, and let's say it's from the hand, so it needs to synapse right here on the somatic sensory area. In most cases, it's going to hit what's called an interneuron, which is kind of like a middle management type of neuron. I'm going to make him green right here. And I'm bringing him down to the somatic motor because that's where that little guy is going to synapse on somebody going out 
to the actual muscle that we want to affect. And so we're on somatic, so we know we've got to go to a body muscle, not an organ. So we're going to a skeletal muscle. I'm just going to take that motor command right back out to that hand where the sensation came from in the first place. And have an action on one of the muscles or set of muscles there. Okay, so this green guy is called an interneuron. That's kind of exactly what it sounds like. Interneuron could uh, connect the sensation to the motor, and it can also cross and then go up to the brain and talk to the brain and tell it what's going on. And then the brain can uh, make decisions based on more and more input as to how that hand uh, or that muscle in the leg or whatever it is is going to react, uh, how that's going to be modulated in order to, so that you don't over grip the glass, you know, and break it if you're trying to drink uh, a glass of iced tea or something or uh, adjusting your glasses on your face. You don't hurt yourself doing that. So you've got to have some input from the brain, lots of input that tells you um, what's going on with uh, the muscular system. And uh, you're, you're changing your grip all the time through, through um, the brain's participation in this. So, so of course, just to have that coming down. I also have sensation coming down from the brain and crossing and that's going to be modulating this and then crossing here and modulating here and on and on and on. So we're not going to get into all that. But I'm going to take most of this stuff away so I can label the rest of the things on our gray matter. All right, so we've got the idea now. So we're coming in with sensation and we're leaving with a motor command going out. Okay, coming in the back, going out the front. I'm going to add a couple of words here. When you have a bridge or a crossing, and you see that when I drew the inner neuron going across to this other side. So I have a little bridge here and I have a little bridge here of gray matter. So each of these little bridges or crossings, I'm going to call a commissure. Okay, and so is this one. And it turns out so is this one down here in the white matter. That's a lot of commissures. <laughs> but the easy way to do that would just be to think of them as the posterior gray. And I'm going to back out of that just a little bit here. Posterior gray commissure, and then this is the anterior gray commissure, and then this is the anterior white commissure, because that's white matter. Okay, so a commissure is just a little crossing right there, and it looks a little crowded through here now, but at least you've seen the word commissure three times. So we've got a gray one. Uh, two gray ones on either side of the central canal, and then we have a white one in the, on the anterior portion of the central canal. All right, let's label a couple more things. I'm going to highlight this so we can see it a little better, maybe. Okay, I'm going to highlight this in paint. This line that I've drawn in pink is dividing the right and left halves of what are called the posterior columns or the dorsal columns. And so we're going to give this line a name. This is the posterior median because it's in the middle sulcus. Okay, the post posterior median sulcus. That's that pink line. And I'm going to highlight. I'm going to highlight another one in the front. Okay, and 
this separation on the anterior portion of the spinal cord is called the anterior median fissure. And I like to just remember F for fissure in the front. That helps me keep that straight. So I've got a posterior median sulcus and an anterior median fissure. I mentioned that these uh, in the posterior median sulcus on either side you have something called the posterior or the dorsal columns. And it's because if I were to draw this out, I would put one here and one here uh, and here and here, and they would look like columns of myelinated tissue, but I'm going to take that off. So the posterior columns, um, just to keep in mind, those are for vibration, pressure, and um, Is it vibration pressure and I guess deep touch. So the posterior columns are on either side of that pink line. I've just got words on the other side, so I'm not going to add that. Hmm. What else I want to add? There's an area here on the lateral side and an area here on the anterior and this is a lateral ionic tract And this is the anterior. It's part of the thalamic tract. Okay, and those are white matter. 